What is up everybody? Welcome back to the next episode of the Bus Build series. Oh, it has been a long time since I posted an update and there's several reasons for that. One, I've been busy recently. I've been assisting coaching a women's soccer team for the college that I graduated from, which has been super fun. But that's meant that I can't have as many uninterrupted work sessions out here. So my work out here has been a little bit disjointed. Plus, the stuff I've been doing here in the bus has been this little chore, that little chore, fixing this caulk line, doing a little paint patch here. You know, so the big work has not been a lot of that. It's been a ton of hours working on little things, you know, plumbing underneath to get my shower to my tank. Like that's not, it's not worthy of making a whole video on to throw in a couple pipes down there. So, you know, a lot has happened, but I haven't filmed it and that's okay. I think the biggest thing that I have done that I didn't film or make a video of is the front unit up in my dash area. And I'm very excited with how that turned out. It looks really clean, it looks pretty, it fits with the rest of everything in here. It takes away a little bit of the, oh, this is a car look in the front. And the other part that has made a big difference is the front curtain. I made a matching curtain to all the ones that are here in the bus and it hangs up there with magnets just like the rest. So with a little tug, I can pull it down, go drive. If I'm sitting in a place for a week or two, throw up that curtain, cuts out the whole dashboard, covers the steering wheel, covers the driver's window. Uh, that way people can't see in at what's in here and I'm not just looking at that the rest of the time. Today, we are gonna start working on something that I've been looking forward to for months now. I don't know if you recall, but about a year ago now, I did a whole bunch of work on this front door and I was stoked about it. Going from, the original school bus double folding, you know, f you know, split doors to this was very exciting. It looked really good. It still had like a bus vibe, bus feel. It let a lot of light in. It was great initially. Over time, I've realized that this door just isn't what I need and it's not gonna work. I'm guessing it weighs about 200, 250 pounds maybe. So it is very heavy. That means that every little bump or jiggle in the road is just transferred into this, the interior of this unit, whether that's the bolt or the locking mechanism or whatever, and any movement that this door has completely destroys this handle, right? So I've gone through two handles already. I think you'll remember that. My cheap smart door handle busted because of the weight of the door. Because it's metal, it's very hard to, to work with. Um, with my experience, you know, I've done a little bit of welding, but I don't have the equipment or the materials to really do anything to this door. Plus, besides its weight, there's plenty of air gaps. So temperature and water can make their way through as well as making a lot of driving noise when I'm driving, going at top speeds, that wind whistles through and you know, it's not exactly quiet. Lastly, because it's metal and glass with terrible R values, Whatever temp it is outside, that's the temp on the inside of the door. So heat and you know cold temperatures get transmitted through this door, through this whole surface very easily. I have a lot of glass in the rest of the bus, but with my curtains, I've been able to kind of like create, isolate those, create little zones where the temperature doesn't get automatically transferred through. But this door has been a weak point in that. So what we're gonna start on today is taking this door off and replacing it. I've ordered a door through Home Depot. It has no windows. It is a normal household door and I'm gonna throw it in here and I'm excited about it. Because my new door has no windows, I've had to make a little bit of an adjustment in some other areas. As the driver looking out this window, it's really handy to see who's here, if there's someone here, like this covers the blind spot. Taking that away is a little bit of a problem. So my solution was to mount another rear view camera on the underside of my rear view mirror. That way, when I'm driving in there, I switch the inputs because my little rear view screen has two inputs. I switch the input to this side camera and I can see from this angle, this is pretty much what I can see on the screen, right? From the wood pile all the way to the side of the bus. So that covers my entire blind spot, which is fantastic, right? You know, if I open these curtains on the inside while I'm driving too, then I can look over my shoulder and see that. But that little camera does a very good job at showing me the entire blind spot on the side of the bus. So that solved that problem. That was the only problem, you know? 
light-wise. Now I don't have to make a curtain for it. It's gonna be so much lighter weight-wise. And now that the door's gonna be fixed and finished, I can finish out my front steps and then this bus is pretty much done. This is the moment I've been waiting for to get rid of this door. Oh my lands. So the door is off. That was actually really easy to cut. I got some long, thick metal cutting saw blades for the Sawzall, which was able to reach in and cut off that hinge. When I was removing the hinges previously, a year ago, I didn't have long blades for the Sawzall, so I'm like in there with a tiny saw, like trying to, ugh, waste of time. But the saw blades made a big difference. Chopped the whole thing out. Now I have a really big opening, which is really nice but that's gonna get much smaller because my new door is gonna be a couple inches you know, skinnier than my original door, which is okay. I didn't wanna spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a custom door that would fit it just right. So I'm going with a standard size door that is just smaller than the opening. So I will build out space around it. I can't make the opening any bigger. So gotta go smaller. That's just the way it's gonna to have to be. Um, in the past couple months, because there was there was there was no rain protection on the bottom of my door this step would have water kind of sitting on it when it would pour and this piece of wood here used to go all the way down to the bottom here and that would just sit in a puddle for you know a day at a time when it was pouring or whatever so i cut out the whole piece that was down here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to line the sides backs floors of all these surfaces with my leftover go board and I'm gonna waterproof it just like how I did in the shower, you know? That way this area, you know, like if it gets splashed, if it gets rained on or leaked, it's easy to clean and I'm not worried about stuff soaking and seeping deep into this area and getting wood problems. So that go board will be the backer here and I'll carry this floor onto these pieces and I'll use leftover tile from my shower for the backs and sides of those walls. And I think this area is gonna clean up nice. For demonstration purposes, I have set my camera on manual mode. That way, when I go inside with the change of lighting conditions, my settings aren't gonna change. So you're gonna be able to tell the difference in light between outside and inside now that I have all my curtains done and my door swapped out. Let's go see how dark it gets in there. And there it is. I don't know what it looks like on camera, but to me, it is dark in here. You can nap super easily like this, even though it's the middle of the day. Oh, it's actually like straight up pitch black in here. So I've put a couple coats of paint on my door and my door frame. I had to do a little bit of trimming this morning to make sure it all fit and open and closed nicely. But now I'm going to install my handle and my deadbolt. So hopefully this door is gonna close and lock properly. That's the idea. I don't have any weather stripping yet, but I'll have to pick that up at some point. But hopefully in the next hour, we'll have a closing and locking door. I got some stuff at Home Depot that matches all the rest of my trim and hardware on the inside, so I think it's gonna look pretty tight. So let's go for it. And now.
now we have the door handle and a deadbolt installed. A little locking button, deadbolt action, and just like that. Installs, it'll lock too. Deadbolt, same key. Fantastic. And with that, I have completed the door swap project, except for a couple things. I still need the weather stripping and I still need to make sure that I have a proper seal around it for both air and weather purposes, but we'll get there. Um, in the meantime, we're moving on to a bunch of other little chores here and there, this and that, finalizing the last couple things before this bus is ready to go. And with that, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already so you don't miss the last couple videos of the build before I set off and start to use this as it's designed for. Again, thank you very much and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.